Uh, maybe we can start by introducing ourselves first uh, as the last team. Uh, so my name is Mircea and I'm an undergraduate uh, CS student. Yeah, hello everybody. I'm David, the same also an undergraduate student. Hi, my name is Katarin. Finished my bachelor at Delft University of Technology. Yeah, and I'm also Katarin, and I also finished my bachelor at Delft. Cool. So uh, let's start with the presentation. Uh, by the way, very nice presentation for uh, for Mina. Um, so uh, we are the third place after exams, and uh, yeah, uh, next slide. So we're gonna quickly show you the general idea that we had for this competition, uh, what we thought is important, and um, what are the observations that we used to reach our final solution. We're gonna talk about the model that we use and the configuration of how we generate candidate solutions, what is the uh, custom scoring rule we, we are using at the end. And lastly, we're gonna talk about what else we tried because we tried a bunch of stuff, but uh, some of them either didn't work or we had uh, not so much time to, uh, to finish them. And also what are the limitations and possible future work for, um, for our solution. Next slide. Yeah, so as we talked a little bit before, uh, we are all uh, CA students and um, we are kind of new to Kaggle uh, with too many competitions, but we had some experience before with fine tuning, uh, lens prompting and uh, yeah, just working with them in general. Cool, next slide. So here's a diagram with the general idea that we had. Uh, it's very similar to the, uh, the first place. Uh, we got inspiration from uh, from the notebook, which I believe got a the early prize in the competition. We use an LLM, which was pre-trained on mathematics data set, but also fine-tuned on the mathematics data set, which we, which we find is very important. Next slide. We also use chain of thought reasoning, uh, which which maybe, would, maybe was not explained uh, before by the other team, but uh, basically the reason you would want to use chain of thought reasoning is because you break up uh, the reasoning process in smaller steps and you help the LLM uh, focus on on specific parts which uh, makes the uh, makes it more consistent in a way we also use uh, we also use a tool uh, so basically the same as Numina we use Python and uh, we find that uh, integrating this Python tool is uh, is extremely is extremely important for uh, for good results next uh, we use self consistency which basically means we ditch uh, the normal uh, agreed decoding that is usually used in LLMs, and uh, we generate multiple candidate solutions. And uh, yeah, that's all. that's also something very important which we're gonna also talk about later. And uh, finally, we have multiple candidate solutions, and at the end, we develop a custom scoring rule such that uh, um, we account for. Um, for how important each of the kind of solutions is, we think is the problem. We derived these statistics for the scoring rule based on observations we took from our own validation set, but also on the public data set. Next slide. Uh, the first observation we use is that, uh, is basically coming from a Kaggle uh, discussion post, which uh, shows that uh, as you increase the number of kind of solutions, but also the number of generated tokens, the stability and the accuracy of the model increases now uh, the stability is very important for two reasons especially for us uh, internally let's say such that we can uh, differentiate between which solution is good which solution is bad and uh, with much more accuracy and secondly accuracy is important but we see that after a number of uh, after a number of kind of solutions or tokens it kind of saturates uh, next slide and the second the second observation is that the precision to use for the model weights and also for the KV cache is actually very important. Uh, we try different uh, different configurations here based also on the capabilities of the hardware on Kaggle and our own capabilities internally. And we find that uh, a drop in precision actually matters, which is not always the case because there, there's a lot of uh, public, uh, public models, which as you lower the accuracy, the performance remains roughly the same. But uh, for example, here we find that uh, decreasing the the precision of the of the model weights and also the KV cache 
can all uh, can bring down the accuracy by one two problems. Uh, nice. So now I'm gonna pass it to Catalin to talk about the model that we use. So when it comes to the model, we used the DeepSeq Math RL as it shows the best accuracy on the math benchmark. Our attempts at fine tuning the RL model were unsuccessful. Uh, and sadly, we did not try fine tuning the base model. Uh, we kept the model in FP16. So even though our so even though Bfloat 16 gave uh, slightly better results uh, on the validation set, it had some uh, stability issues. In order to generate the candidate solutions, we used VLLM due to its notable speed advantage when compared to alternatives. We also decided to parallelize the execution of the code the LLM generates, which also proved to give a significant boost. We start our generation with one of the two prompts. The first one encourages a normal chain of thought thinking, and the second one, uh, which emphasizes the use of Python and SimFi. And we use a split of three and four over seven uh, of the total number of generations uh, per problem. Next, I will pass it to David. All right, so I'll take you through the flow of actually generating a candidate solution. It might be a bit of overlap with the previous team. Um, we start with any of the two prompts we talked about. Uh, we query the LLM to generate a response, and we stop right after it finished generating a code block. In this example, we asked for the square root of four, and they then gave us a Python code that would do the, cal the simple calculation for us. We then extract the code it generated, execute it, and concatenate it back to the generation. Uh, one such generation execution loop is what we call an iteration. We allow our model up to seven iterations for each candidate, uh, during which the LLM can fix any errors in the code or just work out the solution step-by-step -step using code. After finishing the output of the code execution back, we query the LLM again in order to get the final answer. We then extract the final answer from a, a box format. Uh, as you can see, uh, the answer two is in the box construct in this example. Uh, the LLM, unfortunately, often forgets to actually use this format. Uh, even when it's specifying the prompt, instead it will just say the answer directly. Like in this case, without any box stop, it just said the answer is two. Uh, in order to help with this problem, we try to force the model to output the answer in the format we want. We do this by concatenating one more block to the end. We do this if the model did not give any code for the large generation, but also did not give a final answer. The block contains a string that says the final answer is boxed and ends in a cliffhanger. We then let the LM generate a few more tokens to actually get the number in the correct format. This method worked surprisingly well and gave us a more successful outputs without relying on other more complex extraction methods, which might also be error prone. Um, we, of course, do not generate just one candidate solution, but a lot of them. We go one iteration at a time and we use a VLM to generate all candidate solutions in parallel in one patch. After all generations are done for an iteration, we execute the code in batches. Uh, we then continue like this until either all generations finished with an output or we exceed the maximum number of iterations. Our goal was uh, to be able to generate around 50 to 70 generations for both for each of the two prompts we used. We managed to get to around 140 generations on average per problem. Uh, we found that by running the code in batches, we managed to squeeze just enough performance to hit our goal. Uh, finally, after generating all solutions, we score them. Our scoring is based both on the final result, but also on the code outputs that led to it. We only give a tiny amount of points for just getting the final answer, namely 0.05. Uh, we instead uh, give the most points if the final text answer agrees to the code outputs. Um, by agrees, we mean that the final answer is contained in the code execution at some point in the generation. In this case, we give 0 0.8 points. Besides the scoring rule, we also penalize some types of solutions. We observe that the model would often make a number of very predictable errors. We have seen a very large number of incorrect solutions with answers with small numbers. Secondly, we have also seen a lot of wrong answers where the answer would be actually contained in the problem formulation, which is a bit weird. 
uh, we believe these errors could be partially attributed to the model guessing the final answer when we force it with the method we described before. Um, we just decided to penalize the solution as a percentage of the total number of candidate solutions we start with. We opted to subtract 5% uh, of the total generations for small numbers and 10% uh, for the numbers that are part of the problem. Both of these penalties gave a plus two solve problem boost our validation, which is quite impressive for some simple rules. We went from 23 to 27 to 25 to 27 on our validation. Ideally, one with user reward model uh, that could give scores instead of relying on these hard coded rules. But unfortunately, we didn't succeed in getting a better score with the reward models we tried. Um, in this competition, we obviously tried a lot of solutions and most of them failed. But we had two approaches that showed promising results that are worth, worth mentioning. So, as mentioned before, we found out that precision of the model, model matters a bit. And since default 60 is not natively supported on T4 GPUs, we have changed the VRLM library to allow for default 16 emulation. However, uh, running inference and the number of generations was slower. So we had fewer candidate solutions and instability in our results, and we decided to not use it. And one other version of our notebook involved doing the whole candidate generation in one single VLM call. And we manipulated the model logic to output the correct code outputs instead of concatenating them in iteration. And this version allowed us to early exit on quickly on simple problems and brute force as many as 300 generations on hard problems, where the model was uncertain about the result. And unfortunately, we did not opt for this version in the end due to it being newer and possibly of bias in the private leaderboard. And looking in terms of problems with our current solution, as mentioned before, the heuristics using the scoring rule are not optimal. We plan to use a reward model to weight solutions instead of simple rules. Then we notice that our current solution have almost equal number of generations for easy and hard problems. So a method to better early exit rules uh, that gives importance to harder problems will be desired. And lastly, in our chain of thought algorithm, although we do some pruning on unfeasible solutions, some paths might be flawed and continuing on them would just lose us time since it will not give any meaningful answer. And we pl plan to explore for the next competition different problem techniques such as three of cuts. And this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for all the discussion to all participants and the public shared notebooks. And special thanks to the organizer and the Kaggle team for hosting such a fun and interesting competition.